Hello and welcome back to the garage. In today's video, we're going to be working on this old 1977 DT100. This old 1977 DT100 has been around here for about a little under 10 years. Now, it doesn't run, it used to run, but it's got low compression, about 30 pounds of it. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. But first, I want to give you guys a little bit of a walk around so we can kind of see what we're getting into. So this is what we've got here. You can see it's pretty clean. It's got something leaking. I think it's fuel from the petcock. Um, no oil seeping past on the head or the jug here. There's not really any scratches or dents in it. The worst part of it is right, right here and right here on the seat. A little dent there. A little bit of an owie right here. But I have it in gear right now because I've got it on the table. I kick it over, but we're going to go ahead and take the tank off, I think. And take the spark plug out. Under the seat here, we've got ourselves the original toolkit spot for the battery which you don't need the battery to start these and our two stroke oil reservoir which i don't use i just mix straight into the tank you don't want to trust those unless you know everything about it because that's the reason why this thing blew up the first time but we'll see what's going on now all right So now that we've got a little bit more room here and you guys can see better, this is your coil. This is what makes the lightning inside of the combustion chamber, your little carburetor. And there's a few things that are a little broken over here. So that shouldn't do that. That should all be together, but it doesn't seem to affect the spark at all. But we'll go ahead and take the spark plug out. I'll hook up the compression tester and I'll show you what I'm reading there. So before I begin taking all this apart, I want to show you what I'm talking about when I say compression tester. A compression tester is this little gauge and hose right here. Now this end goes into where your spark plug goes in your engine. And this end here is what reads the pressure produced by that piston. Now these have all kinds of different attachments for different size spark plug holes or what have you. Now this can only be used on gas engines. The diesel ones have a very different end on them and a much higher pressure rating. So because this is a little motorcycle, gas engines are anywhere from about 100 to 190 at the high. This, this needs at least 90 PSI to start. 30 is just not going to do it. So we're going to go ahead and see and make sure that it's at 30. Uh, you never know, maybe it fixed itself. Probably not. This one here is the same as the compression tester I just showed you, but this one has a cool little quick disconnect so you can use it on whatever hose you want, longer hose, shorter hose, whatever, you know. It's just like a regular air chuck line for your pneumatic air system. But this one has a little adapter on it, and this is what I was talking about for different size spark plug holes. So this is one spark plug hole, this is another spark plug, and this is the one we will be using for this particular motorcycle. They're really fun. So we'll go ahead and take the spark plug out and throw this in and kick it over a couple times. She's a little bit gummy on those threads there. So this will be a good example of what your spark plug probably shouldn't look like. 
Well, it's not too bad. So, really what you want to see is that, well, kind of like this, but not as black. And, I mean, it's a two-stroke. There's going to be oil getting on it. But, oh, it smells like gas. <laughs> anyway, go ahead and put in our, actually probably easier to put the adapter in first. got to get snug in there so that it seals and we can go ahead and put on our hose and it only needs to be hand tight just enough and so we'll be able to see what our pressure is so I'm gonna go ahead and put this rig into neutral and we'll be able to kick this over It looks like we're sitting just under 30. So that would be some serious compression leakage past the rings, hopefully, or past something else. So now that we know what the compression is right now, which is about 30 pounds, we're gonna go ahead and remove the head. So using, I think, a 17 millimeter. Go ahead and bust these things off. All right, moment of truth. Let's go ahead and see what we got in here. Really like that to be out of the way, but we have a piston. <laughs> well, that's good. Now that I've got you guys in a little closer, I'm going to go ahead and rotate the engine over. Now, I don't see, at least not on this side, I'm going to get in your guys' way here for a second and take a look. So. So it looks like we've got a little bit of scoring here on the end. A little bit right here. But it's not, it's not notch. I'll go ahead and get you guys in there now. So if you look right there, you see that scoring on the cylinder wall? Right about, or I guess right below my finger. That is not really good. And we've got some more over there. So this engine definitely had a little bit of an accident, but I don't feel any deep ridges. Maybe this one right here has a little bit of a rough spot, but I think we'll be able to put a honer in this, shine it up, get a new piston and ring, and go ride it. So before we can take the jug off, there are a few things we have to remove. Got to take the exhaust pipe off, and I'm just going to remove it completely. That way you guys can see better. And we got to take this carburetor off because this whole section here is going to come off and the piston is just kind of sit there in between the lineup studs. So I'll go ahead and speed through that real quick.
here's what we've got. You guys can see that wear there. Let me zoom in on it. You see that little mark right there? Right below my finger? That is where the piston and the ring have become one and where we're losing our compression. Looks like we also might have a snapped ring. So, we'll go ahead and take this piston out, make sure that we don't get anything down inside the crankcase. We'll have to flush it and drain the oil now, but we'll get everything out on the table and take a closer look at everything. So inside of here is a little snap ring that we're gonna go ahead and pull out and not drop into the transmission. <laughs> so here's our little snap ring. And that is what holds our wrist pin in. And I'll show you the wrist pin here in a second, but I'm gonna move the exhaust, or not the exhaust, I'm gonna move the uh, piston up some. Now that we're at a better angle, this little snap ring right here goes right in this hole to keep that wrist pin in. And so now, without dropping the wrist pin into the transmission, we'll go ahead and tap it out from the other side with a pair of pliers. Come on, little buddy. All right, I'm gonna go over to the other side. You guys stand there, watch it, make sure it doesn't fall out, all right? So this is the wrist pin, and looks like we're gonna be able to reuse it. Perfect. All right, so we can take our piston off. So right there is where it welded itself. Yeah, she popped for sure. So this is what a blown piston looks like. All right, let's go ahead and get this all set out on the table and maybe start cleaning some stuff and see what's salvageable and what's not. We know this is gonna go on the shelf. <laughs> so taking a closer look at everything, you can really see that this thing had insufficient lubrication on the cylinder walls and the piston skirt. And that's what welded that up right there and caused us to lose all compression. Here is a new one, what it's supposed to look like. Now, it comes with a new wrist pin, but here's our old wrist pin. And I mean, it's really not that bad, but if we have a new one, we're going to use it. And it also came with new snap rings as well. And here is our bearing. We'll clean that up. I'll try to find a new one because I mean if we've got it apart we may as well and we'll have to get new gaskets as well we don't want to be losing any compression and it looks like we're getting to that point right here where it's a little bit black on that edge but nice and shiny over here I think we're about to lose the head gasket speaking of heads here is our head for this little bike for those four stroke guys out there you'll notice that there are no valves in here and no rockers. Well, that's because this is your valve. So you've got a piston with uh, your intake holes, and then you'd have these reeds, all kinds of fun stuff. So it really keeps it simple, keeps it all nice, nice and together, but you do require a bit more oil to run these. But we'll go ahead and clean this up, make it look brand new. And this right here is gonna need some work as well. So because we had scoring on the piston. We also have scoring on the cylinder wall here. And this part, this little section is the section that feels the worst. But when I was playing around with this thing, I noticed that we don't really have much of a tolerance on this piston here. I mean, she's definitely in there. I mean, we've got maybe a little bit of room for oil to pass, not too much, because that's kind of what the ring's job is, is to keep the oil from coming up here. 
and for giving you compression, but we do have a little bit of leeway to hone this back out and make it brand new again for our brand new piston without, you know, having to worry about piston slap, which is when you've taken too much material off and this thing just jingles in there. You don't want that. So we'll go ahead and get a honer and shine that up. Make this look brand new, get a new gasket down here, make sure every bit of this is clean. And we'll also go through the carburetor just to uh, make sure it's all nice and done up. That way we cross all of our T's and dot all of our I's on this. So we'll go ahead and start cleaning. So here's the difference between freshly cleaned and still a little bit dirty. So we'll go ahead and get this one cleaned up and see what we uh, are left over with. So now that we know what's gone on inside the motor, we know we have some honing to do, we've got some parts to order and we've got some stuff to clean such as the engine, the rest of the engine down here, the transmission. So. We're going to go ahead and end the video here. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me here today at the garage. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe. Watch through some of the old videos, especially if you're new here to the channel. And as always, we will see you in the next video.